So this is the scene from this afternoon in Melbourne. Check it out. As I stand out of the camera, you can see the gradient and the color and the sunset. And a lot of people will have you know, tea or coffee or something with their friends on a Sunday afternoon. And then we do our day game. We implement our nine step strategy and the guys get a whole lot of experience and good results. But just for your convenience, I'm gonna change the exposure there so you can see me a little bit better because today I have a vlog for you all about the concept of how to prevent your conversations from becoming awkward. Okay, you know, some, some blogs are about how to, how to keep the conversation going. Well, the, the kind of the inverse of that is how to prevent a conversation from becoming awkward, how to stop the conversation from stalling out, and how to rearrange the expectations in a conversation so that you don't have to keep them entertained and you don't get this distinct feeling of the interaction starting good and then going down. Like imagine if you start with really good energy you have good energy and then all of a sudden the, the interaction dips down and, and that's not good. So let me run through a whole list of verbal mechanisms that can stop your conversations from going awkward so that that way you can talk for longer, create more attraction, create more rapport, get more compliance and lead to picking up more girls. So I'm surrounded here by all these interesting purple lights. So I'm just going to have to be like Thanos from uh, the Avengers during this video. Purple Alex, Thanos, the destroyer of universes. So, all right, let's, let's go through this. Here's the problem. Here's the problem that everybody has. You, you speak for a little while, you can go up, you can say a couple of things, and then before you know it, you're, you're running out of things to say. And if you start with energy, uh, hey, what's up, where are you guys from, what are you guys doing, are you having a good weekend? You're starting the conversation, and people will respond with energy. And you gotta realize that everybody that you meet, every human being who has a bit of social skills, they have their own ability to introduce himself to anybody else and that uh, that little routine that routine that every single person has only lasts for about 45 seconds and if they don't like you it's going to be less if they do like you it's going to be more but generally girls aren't great at keeping the conversation going because if you're the one starting the conversation uh you're the one hosting the conversation you, you are going to be putting them under pressure they aren't going to know how to keep the conversation going because they're going to be self-conscious, you're putting them on the spot, uh, and, and nobody wants to risk embarrassing themselves uh, because that affects their reputation, their sense of self. People don't like to take social risk or go outside of the boundaries because obviously um, you can be judged negatively for it. You can embarrass yourself and nobody wants that. So what we can do to, to prevent the conversations from going badly is a number of things. And off the top of my head, I can think of a list of maybe five or six let me explain them to you now. Now, I'll try to go in in order of easiest to hardest. First one I can think of. Whenever you speak to anybody, it's really good practice to be continually saying, don't let me stop you. You know, imagine you're meeting somebody with cold approach in a bar or a pub or a party or even social circle, and you go up and you start the conversation. Hey, where are you guys from? What are you doing? I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And then work into the conversation, hey, don't let me stop you. If you've got a drink, you've got to dance, go for it. Now, what that does, when, when you add that into the conversation, that's you know, explicit empathy saying, I'm aware of how you feel, I'm aware of what you guys might be doing, I'm aware of your, your alternative agenda to speaking to me, and you're, ready, you're allowed to take off whenever you need to, that's all totally fine. And the alternative of that is if you are you know, going up and making conversation. It's almost like a forced marriage. It's almost like I'm speaking to you and now you're forced to speak to me and you're, you're almost stuck there. And people are not very good at knowing how to walk away from conversations. So by the way, if you ever need to know how to walk away from your own conversation, bonus skill, just say something simply like, oh, pardon me, I need to go to the bathroom. Pardon me, my drink is empty, I'll be right back. Hey, hold that thought, I'll be right back. Hey, my friend just walked in, I need to go punch him in the face. I'll be back to you in a second. Hey, sorry, I've, I've, I have to interrupt you. I've got to get out of here. You're totally allowed to do that. And another a takeaway technique that we use is we say, oh, goodness me, it's girls night. I'm interrupting. I'll leave you to it. Even if, you know, that's an evasion technique rather than a, rather than a polite conversation ending technique, uh, that works well. If, if, for example, if there's a girl hitting on you that you're not really interested in or you're stuck in a conversation that you don't want to be in. Uh, sometimes you get stuck in conversation with guys that you don't want to talk to and you say, hey man, one second, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go talk to that girl. Give me a sec. Wish me luck. And then you can just bounce out and, and get out of there and use your energy and your, your attention and your focus on people that you want to speak to the most. Anyway, back to the skills. When you say, don't let me stop you, 
you're always saying that. You've just laid down that you, you have empathy, you're aware of how you're affecting other people. And the girl that you're speaking with, she's gonna think, okay, I can go when I need to. There's no pressure here. There's nothing expected of me. This is not like an arranged high pressure conversation. I can have a nice conversation and I'm, I'm free to go when I want. And you've built that mechanism in. Now, point number two, this is more of a body language technique. You, I can just imagine you guys out there in college bars and university all over the world, not knowing how to, go, how to talk to girls and adding these techniques, you're gonna get so much better and have so much longer conversations. My students are doing it here and doing a great job. I'm excited for you, I can just imagine it now. So the next technique is when, when you are talking to a girl, be really careful, so many people taking photos, be, be really careful to not hang on every word that she says, right? Technique number two is to try to keep divided attention. Now, tangibly, when you're having the conversation, you, you don't want to be leaning forward. Now, imagine if that's your foot, right? And that's your, that's your heel. You don't want to be leaning on the front of your foot, like leaning in like this. You want to have the weight in the back of your foot. So you're casual and the center of your gravity would be in your hips rather than up in your neck. So if you're leaning in the front of your toes, your center of gravity is in your neck, your eyes are popping out of your head, uh, you have a high balance, you're kind of highly strong, it's not good. But if the center of gravity is through your heel, it goes through your hips, and then your, your, your upper body is free to move around and you're more relaxed. That's called being more of a relaxed guy. The other thing is a lot of guys accidentally, they hold their breath when they're talking to a girl. So imagine the girl is saying something and you're like, <laughs> and that could be a thumbnail right there. And you're, you're holding your breath, hoping to hear every word, because to you it's so important that you don't mess up this conversation. Don't do that, okay? Breathe normally, and don't be afraid if you miss a couple of parts of the conversation. It's a party and a bar, it's not a university lecture, so you don't need to be perfect with the way that you listen. It's a real awkward thing if you listen so carefully, it puts pressure on the listener, it's a bad idea. Another thing that guys do is, a body language thing, and this is bundled in with tip number two, is you track the girl's eyes. You lock onto her eyes and you never let go, right? The right thing to do, if you're an abundant kind of guy, you should actually have divided attention, both being aware of the person that you're speaking to, the girl that you wanna pick up, and you're aware of her friends and your friends and other people around you. And we should be in the club and the bar or the party, we should be there for the party, not just to pick up and try to get some action, which is really what a lot of you guys on the channel wanna do. And that's fine, but realize that there's other people with other intentions out there in the world. So you need to be aware of that. So, you know, face towards the DJ or the bar or the great party, don't be kind of focusing in on that girl uh, and, and making her feel uncomfortable. So break your eye contact. <clears throat> Don't hold your breath on every word that she says. Have a lower center of gravity uh, and things like that. Uh, oh, another thing is, don't be so eager to keep the conversation going. Don't be, don't be rushing to say something when she finishes. I'm kind of skewing off the topic, but these body language things make the conversation smoother and lower pressure. Technique number three, and this is more of an explicit one, okay? When, I think, I, I had a, a situation with a guy last night and he had a really long interaction with girls in the bar. And, you know, he met them, they had drinks together, he bought them one, they bought him one, uh, and then they were dancing it out together. And then he said the set kind of died in the ass, right? The set kind of died down. Or they kind of, like the energy went from a high, positive, oh, nice to meet each other, and it kind of dips down. The problem is, my guy, he's sensing that, and he's thinking, oh, damn, I'm, I'm losing progress, but you can't really gain any more ground once you're in. Then you go into a holding pattern, dancing, chilling, drinking, whatever, but the verbal mechanism, the explicit ver verbal mechanism to, uh, to deal with that is you say, you say to the girls, you're the kind of girls that I feel like I don't need to keep entertained, right? I don't feel, you're the kind of girls, I don't feel like I have to keep you entertained. You, I can be company with you and not need to keep you happy all the time, right? You're super chill. So you can explicitly verbally say that and then that way you can make the conversation lower expectation. You can say it's okay for us to hang out and be low energy and not have to keep each other happy. Like, you know, you know like a maitre d' at the restaurant and the restaurant's like, is everybody okay here? You guys still doing okay? Hey guys, you okay? And then, you know, inevitably the students start to worry that, oh no, I'm not doing okay. I'm losing something with this girl. Uh, 
and you're going to be in trouble. Okay, so technique number three. Technique number four, and this one's a little bit harder, uh, and it requires you to, to, to go outside of your comfort zone, go into the edgy zone, you know, safe zone, and then a little bit more edgy, the edgy zone of expression. And what you need to do is you basically need to be kind of silly in the beginning, okay? So if you're silly in the interaction, you set a precedent of low expectations of communication. If you're serious in the beginning, hello, where are you from? What are you doing? I'm doing this, I'm doing that. If you are, are so serious about that, then you're gonna set up a framework where the person that you're speaking to is gonna be serious as well. And obviously, that's not good, that doesn't help, etc., etc. So some of the silly things you can do is just crack a joke early on, dance, take up space, and indicate that you're not here to be serious. And if this is gonna be in a courtship environment, like social circle, friends of friends, even at the beginning of a Tinder date, if you say something kind of silly or do a kind of a silly action, and I'm thinking subtle, then you lower the standards of expectation and you allow the girl to be silly as well. For example, if I'm meeting a girl in a bar and I say, hi, nice to meet you, I'm single, and then, then what I do, I say, hey, everyone, I'm single, anybody like me? I give up, cool, let's get on with it. So I've just taken up a bit of space, expressed myself, taken a bit of a risk, I've been a little bit weird, and the girl's like, oh, this guy's a funny guy, he's a silly guy, but he can then switch back to the serious mode and I can introduce myself, I can say where I'm from, I can get to know them in a serious way, but I've shown that I can also be fun and silly as well. So I've, I've just checked that box. Another thing that one of my good friends did, a wingman who went on to be like on national TV and a huge success, he would meet the girls and in the beginning he would do a little dance. He was like, oh, nice to meet you. Time to party. Where are you from? What are you doing? So just a silly little dance in a very Stifler-esque kind of, kind of manner. And the girls know that this guy is funny, silly, and we don't all need to be super highly strung in the conversation. Some of my guys in the United States, they got a bit creative with this, and they would just make a very dry, uh, self-deprecating joke in the beginning, and they'd roll up and say, hey, nice to meet you. I'm a, a serial killer. I just got out of jail. Hope you're having a great night. Nice to meet you. Can I buy you a drink? And just by making a silly, dry joke, the girls know that this is a silly precedent and she can be silly as well. She can make jokes equally as crazy or silly as that or dance or be creative and make mistakes. You know, the reason why people are stifled, they're stifled because they're worried that they're going to say the wrong thing or they're going to make mistakes. But if you show that you can do things that are mistakes or be silly and silliness is a social mistake, then they think, I can relax, this is an environment where we're all friends, we're not judging each other, and the conversation can flow, AKA not be awkward. Technique number four is another explicit expression, and that's when you say to the girls, you say, uh, I, I've switched off for tonight. I, I, you know, I've got here and now I feel like I can relax, I've worked so hard all week, I feel like I'm switching off and I don't need to use my brain anymore, thank goodness. And that is a really, really simple technique. And imagine you're speaking to the girl and she's hoping that you keep the conversation going. And you will keep the conversation going, but instead of you know, trying to please her with high octane, interesting information and humor, you can then, you're dulling it down, lowering, lowering the standard of expectations, and then you can just flow on in the conversation in a super chill way, okay? So you say something like, I've switched my brain off for tonight, it's Friday, I'm not thinking anymore, I officially am not doing anything until Monday. And you say that kind of thing and then you continue to hang out with the girls. It's good. And I should kind of remind everybody at this point that we're basically empathizing that, you know, everything is cool here. We don't need to worry, but you are going to continue to move things forward. Enjoy your company, develop rapport, uh, compliment, range of emotions, spike emotions, call to action and have a plan, all of that. But at the same time, you're saying, don't let me stop you. I feel like I can switch my brain off. Uh, you're the kind of girls that I don't need to worry about and you're being kind of silly knowing that the, the standard of expectations are lowered. Technique number five, as I channel my, my inner, inner Thanos here, in the purple, purple head. Um, technique number five is when you, when you actually run out of things to say, here's a little checklist of the things that I use and that I teach my students to use uh, when there is that dead air. One of the reasons why you run out of things to say is because generally you're trying to generate the conversation only based on content about the girl. But when you get to that point, then you can shift gears and start sharing about yourself. So in order to avoid making things awkward, technique number, technique number five, what you do is you then very simply change gears and say, hey, let me introduce myself, okay? 
And so many guys, they don't bring this into their repertoire at all. And, you know, a, a little girl who might have, uh, you know, varying levels of confidence in a bar, surrounded by all these people and maybe intimidated by other girls, if you don't give her anything to work with, she's not going to be able to converse with you. So if you're talking to her, asking questions, where are you from, what are you doing, you're trying to crack jokes, trying to be silly, and you just leave it at that, then it's gonna go nowhere. But if you then bring it back to yourself and offer content, you say, let me introduce myself. My name's Alex. I have a creative media company. It's called Alex Media Studio. Um, I'm here with my friends. I'm actually managing the bar tab for these guys tonight uh, and do the handshake. Then you can say, oh, so where are you from? So you set the precedent to keep the conversation with general content and the girl knows a lot about herself, but you have to be the one to establish that. So that's one of the things we talk about when we run out of things to say. Next thing is you start talking about the decorations and this is just verbal filler. It's just non-dead air. And I think one thing that you want to write down from this video is that girls are not motivated by excellent content. Girls are motivated by no awkward silences, right? So if, you, if the air goes dead, if there's no back and forth between you two, look around you and say, look at this beautiful design. Look at this interior decoration. Oh my God, look at these lights. Oh my God, look at this amazing bar top. Look at the beautiful facade. They put a lot of thought into this. And then when you start looking around, when you start looking around you, then you can have some creativity and some silliness, some fun by reinterpreting what's going on around you. So if I'm looking at this city, which has since turned dark, have a little look at my, my head here, my Thanos head. The city since turned dark, you say, look at this amazing city. It's like, like Gotham City. You think Batman's up in there floating around, being silly, having a good old time. Like, oh, maybe Batman will come down and save you. So you can, by observing your surroundings, you can then reinterpret it. The next thing to say when you run out of things to say is simply give the girl as I just fix my focus here there you go I'm back back in the game the next thing I do is I start complimenting the girl's shoes okay so I say your, your shoes are beautiful for a Friday night those shoes are really charismatic uh, you, you're so confident for such casual shoes I love your dancing shoes the shoes reflect a lot about a person and it's, it's kind of safe verbal territory to go into. It can be risky to speak about her makeup or her body or her athleticism, but shoes are a safe topic and it can go in any direction. Now this isn't high octane content, but it is something that you want to write down to jump to if you start running out of things to say. And then the next thing that I'll say if I'm running out of things to say, the next thing that I'll say is I'll start giving compliments. I'll say your energy is so good. You look so elegant this evening. You're so well dressed. I think the composition of your makeup and hair and, and all your style, brilliant. I love it. I wish I could look as good as you. How do I look? So we start talking about things that are super complimentary to the girl, not aesthetic, not like you're hot or you're, you've got a nice dress, but a reflection of her personality that's, going, that's gone into her look. So it's a qualification and it's very overt appreciation. Okay, so that's technique number five. Number six, and the list just keeps going on. And with number six is, is knowing how to be the one who, who is the one who, you are the one who can break the conversation. When I'm gaming with me and my friends, and by the way, by the way, we can't talk about anything fun on this channel anymore. YouTube is Disney, right? And that's fine, it's good, you know, it's very socially acceptable. All the fun stuff, the, the diabolical stories and the dramatic things and the, the locker room talk, that is now on our podcast where we can tell the story. So check out the, pod call, the podcast, Alex Social, on uh, Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts and all those things. So there we have the fun stuff. The two go together. This is learning material and the podcast is like the, the stories, the dramatic stuff, the exciting stuff, how one student got punched in the head in order to win his medallion. I can't tell that on YouTube. Otherwise, we literally get shadow banned. It's so silly, but I do still want to contribute to the, the pool of knowledge in this field uh, to share with all of you guys out there. Anyway, the sixth thing, the sixth thing, as I was saying, as I get surrounded by the camera by social justice warriors, is um, you want to be the one to stop, to, to break the conversation. So if it's getting a little awkward, you say, guys, you go have fun. Go drink, go dance, go break other guys' hearts. I'll catch up with you a little bit later. And we can play this reapproaching type of game. The thing is, if you, if you, are the guy who the girl has to say nice to meet you and runs away, she makes a mental commitment to herself, a mental agreement with herself that you are the kind of guy that she's run away from. But if you're the guy who 
set it up that you can kind of run away from her, then you can do a reapproach. And in the dry floor phase, at the beginning of the night where people are not spilling drinks and guys are not too aggressive, you're allowed to approach and let go. Like basically you evade them so they don't evade you so that you can reapproach and you get this really nice effect where other guys creep the girls out and they want to come back to you because you were the one guy that walked away from them and they actually want to do more with you because you're cool to begin with. Then we play this reapproaching type of game and then ideally when it becomes like wet floor time and people are dancing and starting to pair up and you're getting into the mood, you want to start, you know, call to action with a girl, go for a drink, go dancing and then get into that holding pattern. We call it sexy girl dance time. Dance it out, chill out, do whatever you're doing. And then and then eventually you want to leave the venue with the girl to, to go on an instant date or to make the number solid or something like that. So there are six techniques to stop making the interaction awkward. Six techniques. So pretty fun, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> so many awkward moments. And you might want to even write some of these things down, put them in your phone so that when you go out and you do day game or night game or whatever it's going to be, that you don't fall into these traps. And if you can have longer conversations, you'll get familiarity, you will seduce the girl into rapport, she will like you, she will comply with you. You can then use all of your spikes. Familiarity equals connection equals compliance equals pickup, right? So familiarity is the key. How to get familiarity is to avoid awkward silences and we use these techniques to avoid that awkwardness. So let me just see how the, my Thanos face is going here. Pretty good. How's the city looking? Pretty nice. This beautiful camera that we have here. So that famous catchphrase, four week natural, it's the last program we want you to ever do. And that, that's truly it. And what's really cool is very rarely do you meet my students in the pickup community because once they finish my program, they or our program, our, our company makes it, uh, once they finish our program, they don't go back into the community. They don't go and join the local lair or the local WhatsApp group. They go and have a whole lot of dates and get laid and have wives and girlfriends and multiple girlfriends and travel the world and have one night stands. That's what it is. And we have a, a four week natural mastermind group which you can join and you can hear the stories of those guys. And I have WhatsApp groups in London and Mexico and Miami and Melbourne and uh, a Europe, you know, the German group as well, of my four-week graduate students. And they talk about like business and financial things and travel and the results that they're having. But you're not going to meet my students in pickup groups because this is the last program that you'll ever have to do. Some guys actually do the program twice because they love it so much because they're high achievers and they want to fine tune their knowledge and get as great as they can be. Plus, it's super fun. When you do the program, it's like you plus a group of other like-minded guys, trained by me, coordinated by me, going out in these beautiful destinations all over the world and just dominating. But the thing is, okay, so here's something strange. It's currently April 21st, and I'm starting my, my Croatia program on June 18th. And this is our best program of the entire year. And I don't know why that, this program hasn't filled up. All throughout the year, Mexico, Miami, Melbourne, uh, afterwards, Finland and New York, New York, they're all selling out. But I don't know why you guys are not jumping on this Croatia program. There's like five positions left and there's only a month to go. Now, I know there's a cost of living crisis going on um, and it's kind of crazy in Europe and you're evaluating your summer options. Well, if, if you're not happy with your social life, if you, you want to get your dating life handled, if your last summer was really crappy and you didn't have the friends you want, you didn't meet the girls you want, you didn't go somewhere fun and sunny and, and have mates by your side and drink drinks and go on instant dates, that's what Four Week Natural is. In Croatia, on the island of Havar, of Havar, and this will be the ninth year that I've done it there. So this is what I'm talking about. You apply for the program, I screen you to make sure that you're ready for the program. Then you sign up, I link you up with the other guys, I help you to organize accommodation for yourself in Croatia. You all come down, it's limited at nine students, and then as a group, and imagine, a group of nine guys for 30 days, like-minded, similar age, European-based, guys who are adventurous, guys who are humble, and then in Croatia, every four or five days, there are different boats of girls from uh, Norway, Sweden, the United States, from Australia, from New Zealand, and they're in their bikinis, they've been, tra they've been training hard for the summer, 
and there's parties in the lunchtime, there's parties in the evening, there's parties at the sunset, there's parties on an island late at night. This is our premier event of the year. It's my favorite. I don't know why you guys aren't signing up. I don't know what's going on. It was full last year, full the year before that, even with COVID. It's the best place, one of my favorite on the schedule. A lot of guys, of course, they'll do the program in cities like Melbourne and New York and Helsinki because that's their home city. But now that you can work from home, you can work from home in Croatia in the summer, take some of your annual leave and absolutely dominate it. It's, it's just, just brilliant, right? And I'm actually going through a lot of the testimonials from last summer. I have like 50 testimonials from the last year that I haven't yet published. I'll get them published so you can see them because the guys are just like, you know, this is an incredible program. Alex is an incredible coach. The location's incredible. I had all these girls. I have all these girls after the program. I'm traveling the world. It's, it's just spectacular. So can't wait to share all of that with you. Check out the first program in Havar, Croatia, starting June 18th, runs for 30 days. And the thing is, I'll be starting a second group in July, July 22nd or something like that. And you can hang around and join in the second group so you can get double the bang for your buck if you do the first program and then hang out with the second program. That's a part of the, part of the deal with us. Anyway, I am freezing here. The temperature is 11 degrees. Thumbs up on the video if you liked it. Of course, subscribe if you haven't seen it before. Don't be afraid to share this video to your awkward friends from university or work or whatever who are really bad at making conversations with girls and embarrassing you when you're socializing with them because this is how we do it. Once a week, sharing the information. Hopefully next week I don't have a purple face, although the purple face thing's been, pretty, been kind of good. Pretty cool. Alex from 4 Natural from Melbourne. Hopefully I'll see you in Croatia because... New York, Finland, and London are already already getting sold out. Croatia, why not? I think you're all evaluating your plans, what you're going to do this summer, and you're waiting last minute to jump on board if other plans don't work out. If you can work from home, if you can get time off work, we're waiting for you. The adventure is waiting for you. The summer is waiting for you. I am your Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm getting old now. I'm like 36, 36 years old. You guys in your early 20s, mid-20s, looking for mentorship looking to get your life on track and to never have to worry about this again. I'm your man. The program awaits you. I'll see you then.